Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another great unboxing video. So recently I purchased a whole bunch of models for our hobby shop www.monster-hobbies.ca which you can now purchase online. But I wanted to add something in for our model car museum coming up in the future. And I ended up getting myself this nice 1923 AMT Depot Hack. This is Model T of course. And I actually wanted this about a year ago when these models came out and I was lucky that my wholesaler still had a bunch in stock because this is one of the ones I'm missing out of my collection. Now I'm only missing one AMT Model T and that's the 23 Roadster. But unfortunately that one's gone. So in this review I'm actually going to use a reference book. This is my grandfather's Dykes Encyclopedia from 1926. And it's got everything automotive all the way up to 1926 in here, even how to make your own garage. And there's a huge Model T section in the back. And as you can see, I've actually sectioned off a bunch of spots in the book. So anyway, without further ado, let's look at the depot hack and we'll use some interesting information from the Dykes Encyclopedia. In 1923, Ford produced 2,011,125 Model Ts for the low price of $364, which would be equal to you paying $5,789 today. Model T's were built from 1908 to 1927 and underwent five different style changes. The fourth styling change came mid-year in 1923 and ended in 1925. The hood taper was increased and the rear section at the firewall is about an inch taller and wider than in previous years. From 1914 to 1925, Model T's only came in black paint. This was to cut costs. During the lifetime production of the Model T, over 30 types of black paint were used on various parts of the car. These were formulated to satisfy the different means of applying the paint to various parts and had distinct drying times. Now if you happen to disagree with Henry Ford's philosophy that every Model T must be black, then the Dykes Encyclopedia actually gave some suggestions in order to repaint your car. The depot hack was used primarily for short hauls between railway stations and hotels or estates. The stark all wood bodies were built by a number of furniture cabinet and custom body firms and the majority were mounted on the inexpensive yet rugged Ford Model T commercial chassis. In the Dykes Encyclopedia we have six examples of such body styles. The express wagon was the forerunner of the Roadster pickup. The wagon was a hybrid, part passenger car, part truck, but basically a bone-shaking buckboard-like workhorse. The hard-working wagon had cargo room to spare. It often overflowed onto the running boards, but eliminated luxuries like roof and passenger seats. So now let's wind the clock all the way back to 1923 and check out the amazing AMT 1923 Ford Model T Depot hack. Here we have a wonderful three-quarter front shot view of our 1923 Depot hack and we see the spare tire mounted on the side as well as the famous crank and the transverse mounted spring. We have the optional version which we can build the express wagon. The model kit is a Retro Deluxe. This is the first reissue in four decades since 1976 actually. Two building options, detailing decal sheet and vintage original packaging. The model kit is skill level 2 for ages 10 and up, will require paint and glue. The frame is a little bit tricky in this as we will see, but overall it's a wonderful model. On this side of the box we see the great side view of our 1923 Depot hack. We also get a nice history over here of what they were used for and who built the bodies. This side of the box shows our variant on our kit. This is the 23 Model T Express Wagon and as you can see it does not have the roof on the top but does have an opening tailgate. The back of the box features a full breakdown of all our parts silhouetted. You can see the parts tree with the fenders and the roof and the body panels, the tires, the engine and rear axle as well as the wheels and the frame. So now let's pull the lid off this model and see what's in the box. And oh boy am I ever excited. How about you guys? Let me know in the comments below. Okay so here we are. We've got the glass, we've got our tires and axles, then we've got a bag with our white components and a second bag with the white components. This is like the fenders and the roof and everything. And then we've got our decal sheet in here which we'll look at at the end and our instructions. 
Today we're going to fill out our knowledge of the instruction sheet a little bit more because we're going to be using the Dykes Automobile and Gasoline Engine Encyclopedia and I'm going to share some of those Model T sections with you so you can get a better understanding of how this whole thing worked in the real world. So here we've got our depot hack instructions and it says important to read these points before you begin. We also have our tools here and what we will need in order to build this model kit. Here's the instruction sheet showing how our Ford Model T engine goes together. There's the cylinder head. We have our right and left hand side engine block, the oil pan underneath, the front cover and the fan, and then the radiator hose which we'll be gluing up onto this bump here. We also have our intake and exhaust manifold, and we have a starter which is a stock option. So you do not need this on here if you don't want to use it. But if you do, it would go on to the left-hand side of the bell housing. And then we also have another stock option, which is the electric generator, which again, you can use or you don't need to use in building this model. Why don't we open up the Dykes Encyclopedia and check out how the Model T engine actually looked and worked back in the day. Here's the right-hand side of our Ford Model T engine in the Dykes Encyclopedia, showing how it all fits together and what it would look like once the engine is assembled. You can see our intake and exhaust manifold here with the updraft carburetor down in there, spark plugs along the top, there's our water inlet, our crank, our fan. We also have our transmission and the magneto covering in here. Here's the left-hand side of our engine block showing the pedals, and we've got our water inlet down here, our fan and our crank. Here's our top view of our engine showing again the transmission cover door right here, carburetor on this side, our inlet and exhaust pipe, and then the spark plugs, and our magneto contact up here, as well as the water outlet and our fan and where it bolts to the frame. Here we have a photographic view of the Ford transmission and control pedals. So here we have the clutch pedal, the brake pedal, and our reverse pedal. Down here are all the bands, because basically the Ford planetary transmission is what we would know as an automatic without the hydraulic assist. So that would be a manual where each of these pedals is actually moving the bands inside a little bit in order to get power to the back in whatever way you want it to go. So again, you've got your reverse pedal, so that would be going backwards, and there is also a brake on the transmission. Now, here's something interesting that I never knew in all my years of building these Ford Model Ts, is that there is a magneto contact point on the top of the transmission cover. So we're gonna take a look at that in a minute. Here we have an illustration showing where our magneto is on the engine. Now the magneto is used as an electrical device in order to start the Model T. That's why you didn't need an electric starter with these and they would go on their own. Here's a blow up illustration of all the components that are in the Ford Planetary Transmission. The instructions for our Model T engine show part number five and they say this is the front cover. What they don't actually tell you here is this funny area with the bump and the little what looks like a hose sticking up is actually called the commutator. Now if you remove the commutator cover this is what you would actually find in here. The commutator is a predecessor to our distributor and here's all the little contact points in here and these are the actual spark areas. Now the four spark areas on the commutator would actually hold wires and those wires would go all the way up into the dashboard into the coil box where each wire would be attached to the top of these little coils and then from the coils they would go out into the spark plugs on the Model T engine. This illustration shows how our commutator is hooked up to the coil box via the wires. So here we have a firing order of 1342. That's how this would spin around and spark each of the spark plugs on the actual engine block. So here, wire number one is black, wire two is red, wire three is blue, wire four is green. The wires are off of each of those screw points. They come up here, they go into this conduit, which would go along the frame. Then the wires come up in behind the dashboard on the coil box, hooked up in this order. There are some points here for the battery terminals and here for your magneto. 
And these numbered ones are for the spark plugs, which are going to come out of the coil box and go onto our spark plugs on the engine. This wiring diagram is for Ford cars not equipped with starters. And what we have here is our headlights hooked up to the magneto. All the wiring is also hooked up to the magneto wires. Here we've got the wire coming out for our headlight and then one that crosses over underneath goes into this headlight and then hits the ground. I do believe that is series, not parallel. And then we've got our commutator wires up here in front of the crank. And then those are all going into the coil box and out onto the spark plugs. Here's an exploded wiring diagram in case you do have a Model T with a battery. It shows a tail lamp coming off the back here, but you could also do the tail lamp with the magneto without the battery. It is shown, it just wasn't shown in the previous wiring diagram. Here you can see the difference in the headlights, how the wires come out one to each side headlight instead of going across and being grounded in series. I do believe this is parallel the way it's hooked up. Also we have these extra things like ammeters and voltmeters. That's for our battery here, which you would not find in the Magneto Model T. These illustrations show the Kingston carburetor for our Model T Ford. Here is where it connects with the intake manifold. You've got your throttle valve here, gasoline adjusting needle, air valve, and air inlet. And then if we take a look at this with the side cut off, you can see how things are going. So down here is our gasoline, and this is a little caulk here for our gasoline line to come in. So you can shut this off from underneath if you need to. There's our gas in the chamber. The gasoline level is in this float here, and there's a needle in here. Now the air comes in on this side on the intake manifold, it picks up a little bit of the gas which gets siphoned up, and up here you would have your gas air mixture, and then that is going into your cylinder heads and being divided out in between all four of the cylinder heads. Model T's also had Holly carburetors available to them, and this is basically that air-gas flow mixture happening in the Holly chamber. So there you have the air with these little arrows, and then it gets kind of sucked down. Here's the fuel with these little flame-type ghosts, and they end up mixing in the chamber here. And then you've got your air-fuel mixture coming in here, and this H right here stands for your throttle plate, which would open up and allow in that air-gas mixture into each of the cylinder heads. For section two, we are putting our wheels into our tires. They call out for the body color right here. There are four of these wheels. Part number 64 is the rear and 65 is the front. And there's an important note on the side. If tires are hard, they may be softened by soaking in hot tap water. Insert wheels while tires are still warm. This illustration shows our Model T construction in general. And this is really handy for our frame and how the Model T would look from the top down. And one thing this shows that is not in our model kit are these nice mechanical brake rod lines that go from the little brace underneath the engine to the back of the brakes because the Model T only had brakes in the back because in this time frame they didn't quite know how to get the mechanical brakes to go up to the front and turn with the wheels when the wheels turned a corner. Step three shows our basic chassis assembly and we are going to be starting off with our two frame rails and then you glue on the front cross member followed by the rear cross member and make sure you have the right part. This is part number 11. Don't get it confused with the one for the Roadster. Then what I would do is make sure that these side rails and everything are completely square before you start to glue on these cross members. Once the cross members are glued in place, just leave this structure here alone for at least 24 hours to let all the glue dry and everything harden up, making sure that the rails are nice and parallel to each other and straight so you don't want them to be you know, like a parallelogram at the back and front. You want that to be 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there, and for these to be 90 degrees from them and parallel to one another. Let that dry the 24 hours. Then glue your transmission support underneath here because you're going to have to turn this over. And then use your hand brake brace. Glue that on. And then last, you would glue your engine in on these posts. And there's two little hooks here that will go onto the post to glue this all in place. 
Panel 4 shows the steps needed to put on our rear suspension. So it goes exhaust pipe extension to the back of the manifold. And then that end goes on to our muffler. This gets glued into the body. And then our rear spring goes up and our rear axle and drive shaft assembly with the front going into the transmission. Here's a view of our rear axle and parts. So we have a universal joint up front and then our differential is actually in this tube. I've heard it also was called a torque tube. And the idea is that the drive shaft is turning in here and it's protected by the tube. On the tube, we have these radius rods that are hooked up to the front and to the rear axle. That's so that when the drive shaft is turning, it doesn't actually twist this entire assembly all to pieces. So that's why it was in the torque tube. Then here we have our axle housing. And then on the back, there's a pumpkin here and the axles actually screw in on the axle housing and inside is the axle rod and the gears in the back. This illustration shows what's going on in our differential for our Ford Model T. Here we have our drive shaft going in here. There would be some bearings as well. And then the drive shaft will turn our drive pinion gear right in here. There is another gear in here, which is the ring gear. And that ring gear is hooked up to our axle right here, which would turn this wheel. And then these gears actuate on this axle so that while this main gear is turning this one, it's also turning this one. But if this wheel were to get caught somewhere, it will stop spinning here and spin this wheel more putting the power to the wheel that's going to free the car. Here we also have the bolts which hold this casing together this way. And there are bolts here which hold on the axle shafts, or the axle covers actually, onto the differential. This illustration shows the universal joint and its parts. So the universal joint is hiding inside here on the torque tube casing. And we also have our rear radius rods, which are mounted on the casing. This illustration shows us our brakes on the rear axle. This would be as if you had pulled the wheel off and shows our brake drums and pads on here. And then there's the back of the wheel is how it would go on. So the wheel itself actually has a brake drum attached into it. And then here is the clevis, which is the little control for our brake lines so that when you actually use the brake lever, it pulls on the rods and that actuates the brake in here. We continue the suspension assembly with our front suspension and here we have our tie rod and our front axle with the spring and our front radius rods. So the step of progression is to glue in the front axle first under here on that lip, then glue on our tie rod assemblies now this little end here is going to go into the steering column in a later build assembly step. Here we've got our front radius rods which glue onto these little pins underneath. And then this one glues onto the pin on the oil pan. Once this is all set up, again, let it sit for 24 hours. Watch your geometry that this is not, you know, like this on that frame, but nice and square. And let that all dry up before you actually put your metal axles and the wheels together and slide them in through the axles. Because the last thing you need is for any of this to cause this and this to go out of alignment. So make sure everything is secure first before putting in your metal axles. Let that glue dry a good 24 hours. And here we also have a wonderful illustration from the top down on that front axle. So here you have your front axle with the wheels on it. And then you've got your tie rod right here. This angled piece is the tie rod lever that connects the tie rod together. And then here we have our idler arm on our steering column and how it goes through. And a front view of that same operation. Then here we've got the axle in the front with the spindle bolt right here. And that would be our spindle going into the wheels with the wheel shown here and the hubcap on the end. Here we have our cowl assembly in step number five, and it just basically shows our cowl here and then the glass in the back. So what it says is to paint this body color. Most of these were wood, so that's very easy to do. And then we're just gonna turn it around on the back. You wanna take your hobby knife and just scrape just along here 
and there, and there, and there, and the bar at the back. And that is so that you can get this perimeter in here for the clear plastic. And then you would carefully use a little bit of Tester's liquid glue along here. And then you would push the window into the back of the cowl, which would be like coming this way. So now on this side, we see number one is our speedometer. Number two is the coil box going in here. And number three is the ignition box. Now those would glue onto the cowl as shown. And then this is the inside. So our steering column would be coming in through the back and going through this hole, just like this in this direction. In order to get familiar with the interior of the Model T, we have this wonderful illustration showing our steering wheel, our steering post, number plate, hand lever, switch, clutch pedal, brake pedal, reverse pedal, rubber mat, switch lever, switch key, our speedometer, carburetor dash, adjusting nut, coil box, and windshield. Here we have this nice photographic illustration of our steering wheel and steering column. The steering wheel is ghosted out so we can get an understanding of what's happening underneath the steering wheel. Here we have all these nice little gears that operate in here when you're turning your wheel. And we also have our throttle lever and our spark lever. These are to start the engine and to keep the engine going. We also have this nice ring here with the quadrants in it. That's so that the levers can lock into these little pins on here in order to keep them at a proper a distance in order to keep the throttle up at whatever quadrant you need it for. Same with the spark advance. Panel six shows our floor assemblies for our express wagon and depot hack. Now here you have your chains in the back and you also have the tailgate. Now you can build this either open or closed. We've got our driver's seat cushion and our driver's seat base. The side walls of our truck, as well as the floor, toolbox up and down, top and bottom, running boards left and right, then our front assembled cowl from the previous step. We also have our steering column and steering wheel, and our handbrake here, as well as our foot pedals down below. All this glues together, remember your order, one, two, three, four and you'll have a great looking little express truck. This illustration shows all our interior dimensions inside our Ford Model T in order for you to create your own floor and whatever else you might need. Maybe you're building a truck and you need to put a bed in here or something like that. And uh, these would be your dimensions so that your body panels are not like hanging over and hitting the fenders or that sort of thing. And we also have the same dimensions here from the side in case you're gonna build a body in here. You need to know how long that steering column is and all the rest. Here's one thing that is not included in our kit, but does come in the Laurel and Hardy Model Ts, and that is the fuel tank, which would be sitting right underneath your seat. If you want to build a different type of Ford Model T truck, then here's a whole bunch of suggestions for different versions of the Ford truck that you could build with some sheet styrene or balsa wood or anything you want to use. And here we have our final assembly for our depot hack. And here we've got the roof going on, as well as the roll-down curtains. We have these rear roof pillars, roof braces. There's a few of those. There's metal armrests we have to glue on. Well, they're plastic, but you know what I mean. We also have the roof pillar and driver's seat back. And it says remove shaded area when building express wagon. So you would cut those off. Then we've got our optional seats. These just click into place. They're bench seats, so there's the bottom and our back. And here it shows how to glue that together. Two-piece spare tire mounting to the fenders there. We also have our headlights. Those are two pieces, the shell and the lens. Then our hood goes into place. Now, you can either glue the hood or leave it open. I'd rather leave it open so you can see the Model T engine. There's our plate and taillight, which glue onto the back of the frame. So our radiator has the expansion tank up top, as well as radiator cap, the radiator itself, and the hand crank. Now what I would do is glue all this together, leave the hood off, glue the radiator on last, and you glue the radiator here, then you would put your hood down, and then push the radiator back so that it, when it dries, push and hold it, when it dries, it should be aligned perfectly and the hood will come off and fit tightly. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, here's a look at our white plastic parts. And I really hope now that I've shown you the Dykes Encyclopedia, you get a better understanding of everything that's going on here. So there's our right and left hand side engine block, our cylinder head, 
intake and exhaust manifold with the special carburetor heat pipe in here. We also have our oil pan, our pedals, our commutator in the back, our fan, crank, starter motor, and then we've got our uh, <laughs> steering column, and then our front suspension components in here, then our muffler, our steering wheel, our radiator tank top, headlights and our spring and then we've got our whole rear axle and differential assembly so let's just take a look at these i kind of lost my place there <laughs> cracked up a little so there's our cylinder head and it's got all the bolts and the spark plugs down the center and then our engine block look at it. it's got the little uh, reliefs in here for our crankshaft on the pan again really nicely done quite a bit of flash in here on the pedals so you're going to have to clean that up. But look overall, though, there's not much flash at all. This is really good. A couple of mold marks in the back, which you can clean up again with your hobby knife. Look at the detail on that leaf spring. Again, really excellent. Okay, that's where your axle, the metal axle, is going to go through, just like on the real car. And again, look at all that. Look at the nice uh, bolts in here off the pumpkin. Again, really excellent work. So yeah, cleaning that up and uh, getting it together, make your model kit look really, really great. Now this parts tree is shared among three other Model T kits, one being the 1923 Roadster and the other being the 1923 delivery truck. And here we also have it on our depot hack. So some of these parts are actually for the Roadster. So just make sure you got the right things, follow the instructions. The spare tire here is the Roadster tire. I do believe these little ramp pieces are also part of the Roadster. I'm not sure where they go. Probably to hold on the little back part of the car. Anyway, here's our radiator. There's our frame rails. These seem to be warped in about three kits. They all bend upwards. So you'll need a jig in order to make this all nice and straight and even. There's the crossover brace that goes under the engine. Also where the brakes are hooked up to. And then we have our nice wheels in here. I also have the hood. So we're going to just take a look at this. The hood, you're going to need to square up the edges with the uh, block of sandpaper. But look at the nice louvers in here. You also get the little hand latches on there in order to open up the hood. Again, really nice. There's no mold marks underneath here. So just a nice simple coat of black paint would get that all together. And then here we've got our radiator. Look at the nice meshwork in here. You can also see the Ford logo. This is really nice. There usually is a sink mark right in the middle of that logo. So it does seem that round two did fix that. Thank goodness, because that's always been a pain with these. And then on the back, we can see there's mold marks, but that expansion tank is actually going to cover that over. There are a couple in the bottom, but again, a good coat of paint, you won't be able to see it. Uh, you could use your number 16 blade to get rid of that as well, but I don't know. On the back of the wheels, there's a little bit of flash in here. So here, let me just steep that angle. I don't know. Anyway, there is flash in there, so you will have to sand these flat and get your files and your little uh, number 11 hobby blade on the point and get that flash out of in between the spokes. That's going to be an interesting one. Again, the frame rails are really nice, but you will need a jig in order to get this all together. But overall, again, detail is high on there. You can see the wheel bolts and the valve stems. So just take your time and clean this up and make it look really, really good. Here we have another parts tree, which is also shared by the other 1923 Ford Model Ts from AMT. This, of course, is our fenders. Now this time around, we are going to be using all the wooden parts. We're not going to leave any behind. So here we have the seats, and that's the backs with the metal posts on here, as well as the bottoms. If you have the Coca-Cola Model T, you know this parts tree very well, and that these were left out. Now this is the bottom of the seat. This would also contain our fuel tank in here, although we're not going to see it in this kit. It is in the 25 Laurel and Hardy type Model Ts, but not in this one. There's our seat cushion, which will glue onto the top. And here we have the little side curtains, which roll down on the depot hack in case there's some bad weather. So now let's bring this up to the camera, and i got to be careful because that seat bottom is actually kind of loose on there. We do have some nice wood grain molded into the panels, which is nice. We also have that leather type texture in here, or uh, I'm not really sure if it's leather, but it's texture anyway. There's also wood grain on all the seat bottoms and seat backs. 
Now if I turn this over, you can see where they all attach. Unfortunately, there are some little mold marks in here and on the bottom of the fenders, which will all have to be sanded and filled down in order to make it nice and smooth. If you want to go that way, super detail this thing, super perfected, I guess you'd call it. There's those wind down curtains. There is a mold mark pin sticking right out of there. So consult the instructions, make sure that you're supposed to remove that before you actually do, in case it's a location thing. Again, you can see the little squares where the seat metals would, or seat irons would actually glue in there. And again, it is quite nice. So overall, this should go together and look pretty perfect. Now this parts tree is actually unique to the Depot Hack Express Wagon model kit. And what we have here is the sides for both versions, the Depot Hack and the Express Wagon. The floor, which is universal to both. We also have that nice toolbox. And then we've got the back tailgate, which is universal to both. Here's our cowl here. And then we also have our little tiny ignition box. We've got our speedometer and we've got our coil box sitting here. This is the correct side mounted tire that we need for both versions. Now, if we want the depot hack, there's all the roof braces in here, as well as a little armrest for the seat. These would be metal and then the roof braces as well. There's the license plate with that tail lamp. Now, some of these tail lamps actually use kerosene as well, but I do believe at this time in 23, they're electric. So just take a look at the cowl. You can see the nice wood grain patterns in here. Again, there's those mounting points. Actually, I do believe the wood grain is, whoops, sitting on this side. You can really see that. However, there's also the, the most many uh, mold marks in the entire kit. It's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sitting just on this one piece. So that's actually quite humorous but you will have to fill those in, which is not so humorous. Again, there's the undercarriage. Just take a look at how great this is and all the wood grain in the sides. So these were basically wood braced and plywood covered. Again, lots of sink marks, but you know, these can be overcome. Again, though, it looks very good. Should look really good once you get all these panels painted. And again, well, there's only one Depot Hack Express Wagon. And this is it. Now, if you are building the depot hack, this is the last piece you need to worry about. This is our roof panel. And here you can see there's three little tabs. This is where it was connected to the parts tree. So you will have to remove those and then sand this edge down flat in order to make it fit on the depot hack and look like the real thing. Now here you can see there is a bow to the roof and that's the little flat piece here with the curve in it and this would be a tar paper on this side and then on here actually it's a piece of rubber is what it really is rubber stapled to the roof in order that when it rains it doesn't get the plywood underneath wet these are the roof boughs in here and you can also see the nice wood grain unfortunately there are some mold marks in here which you'll have to take care of now i would suggest painting this entire thing wood underneath you can also use the dry brush method so what you would do is you would pour down your paint on here, paint the whole thing. Well, not on here, but, you know, on your paint mixing tray. So you would paint this whole thing with one color. And then after that's dry, you would add some more paint onto your paint palette. You would take your brush and you just dip the tips of the bristles into the paint like that. And then with a paper towel, we're using our imagination here, you wipe the bristles off like that on the paper towel, but you still leave a bit of paint into the brush. And then you carefully go across here and the little bit of paint in the brush will hit on the tops of that wood grain and give you a nice wood grain look. Now, remember, you're using a, a darker color down here and a lighter color for your dry brushing, but that'll all pick it up and make this thing look like an actual sheet of plywood, which would look really good. And you want to get the whole thing done because usually when you're showing your model kits, you turn the thing upside down. You say, hey, look at the undercarriage and the differential and all that. And while you're doing that, people can look in through the top, especially in the depot hack, which is basically a big roof sticking up in the air with nothing underneath there, except for the braces in here just to hold the roof on.
so people are going to see it. So don't leave white plastic in here or whatever, because that's going to look terrible when you're showing off that differential. So here I thought I would double up and show you the clear components as well as the tires because there's not too much going on in this model for that regard. There are no chrome components and if there was anything that looked chrome on a Model T, it's usually just nickel plated. And again, there's not much. Basically the radiator cap is all you got. So anyway, here's our glass and as you can see that's our front windshield and you've got the upper and lower glass but it's all molded as one plate. You also have your headlights here. And then here we've got our tires. Now, in order to actually use the tires and put them on the rims, you have to cut this spider web out there, 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 and there, and then off here. And make sure you use your number 16 hobby blade and cut as close as you can to the tire in that little knob, because once you put the wheel in there, if you, the little knobs are sticking up, you can clearly see it. So again, our glass is basically all smooth in there, and our tires do have a tread pattern on the edge, which makes it look really nice. It's actually a little bit directional, so you want to make sure that the Vs are pointing forward, but overall you can see just how great this is. Tires really narrow, and it does suggest that if these aren't really rubbery, if they're all stiff, to uh, just sink this in some warm tap water, as hot as you can get that tap water without it you know, right from the pipe without actually boiling the tap water, because that would be crazy. But you just get that hot and you sink these tires in that water and then eventually they will soften. And once they soften, you can pop them on those rims. And that brings us to our decal sheet. Now I did watch HPI guys unboxing of this model and his build, which was quite nice. But when he showed the decal sheet, I wasn't really sure on the size of this. So I've added in my little ruler up here. Now this is in millimeters for all you guys tuning in from Canada and Europe. The decal sheet is five millimeters. I, I do believe it's square, but still look at this. This is like decals designed for a Hot Wheel and these are supposed to go on your depot hack. Now here we've got Michigan 1923 plates. These are from a historical museum, but if you don't want them, you can actually print your own. And I've got a video up above that shows you how to do that. And now just for some perspective for our friends in America, I've replaced our metric ruler with an actual imperial one. And here you can see that the decal sheet is two inches. And I mean, look at this. These stripes are just so narrow and all the rest. Again, very nice pinstripe work, but there's really no indication as to where these go on the model. So again, a little bit of model builder discretion is advised. Now our depot hack actually does not contain any figures, but I did find these really cool American motorists from 1910 from ICM. These are a figure set that of course ICM is making, but they're designed to fit in Model Ts. Here you have a driver and you've also got a lady that's sitting sort of crossways to the car and just looking out and seeing what's going on. Now these figures could be adapted to fit into the depot hack and would look really, really nice. Now if you're building the Model T Express Wagon and you're looking for something different, try out ICM's American Gasoline Loaders from 1910. Now here we've got the one guy loading up the big barrel with gasoline in it. I guess it's a giant gas tank really. And you've also got his friend who's steadying it and getting ready to catch it in order to lift it up onto the tailgate. This would be awesome for that express wagon and hopefully not too hard to adapt. You also get a bunch of these containers in different sizes as well as an oil can. So again, something really, really cool to consider for your express wagon. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this unboxing of the AMT 1923 Ford Model T Depot Hack. And if you want one, remember I have one available at www.monster-hobbies.ca, which you can purchase now. And you can use the promo code YouTube and save 10% off your next purchase. So just use that at the shopping cart. And I hope everybody will have a good day. Thank you again for watching these videos. And until next time, happy model building.